feel uh, shall you start it's mine yes per, yes perfectly means it's almost yes ten sharp ten one we can start sir yes over to you shri lakshmi yes sir so good morning everyone and uh, welcome to the new new series of uh, we've now named it as scholarly sunday sessions previously what was the tenacious tuesday teachings i think it's a matter of pride for our zone and for the pg subcommittee that this series of program has been running now this is the fourth year that it is happening and i mean i think we already have 101 participants so that's telling us how much this is looked forward to and uh, we are very happy to be a part of this so today this is the first episode in this uh, set and i think with the exams coming up very close so it's like we were all just discussing not just for the students but for the teachers as well this is something that usually happens behind uh, doors because i think there was a time where the examiners used to actually sit in front of the students the externals used to correct the paper now with the uh, university level things happening that's no longer there so there's always a lot of questions on students mind as to what is there in theory what is needed what is important how to write the paper how to actually go about doing all of those things and of course all the stress associated with covering large portions which one needs to do when it comes to theory exam so we have three wonderful experts here today with us to share our wisdom so with just a quick introduction i mean they're all very much part of our west zone and very much known teachers to all of us but then formalities must hold so we have dr ritambara mehta who is the hello good morning ma'am hello and well madam is the professor and head of psychiatry at government medical college surat and uh, as you can see he held lot of positions lot of experience as a teacher publications and is also an examiner since many years so welcome ma'am thank you for sparing your sunday morning for uh, giving some words of wisdom to all our students thank you and i am grateful for giving me this opportunity thank you our uh, second expert we have with us is dr alka subramaniam and someone who i am very proud to introduce as madam is very much one of my teachers as well so madam is currently the additional professor at uh, tnmc and bil nair charitable hospital mumbai welcome ma'am thank you thank you shri lakshmi a pleasure to be here and we have dr ashish shivastava who is consultant psychiatrist and assistant professor at the institute of psychiatry and human behavior goa good morning sir and welcome ashish sir yeah so you are on mute i think i said thank you shri lakshmi our pleasure to be here So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sushil sir. Would you like to just share a few words before? We... Uh, I shouldn't take much time, but uh, let me take this opportunity to welcome our president, Dr. Sudhir Bhave, and all the office bearers of IPS WZB. Uh, at the same time, uh, let me welcome all the students. They have joined. I could see the number one twenty nine. It's huge. Thank you so much. and uh, from bottom of my heart uh, i am thankful to the panelist they have accepted this invitation and uh, that too on a sunday morning and to our wonderful moderator dr shri lakshmi so without a further ado i uh, uh, request uh, shri lakshmi to proceed with the uh, panel discussion thank you thank you so much sir so the students are very much familiar with uh, how we conduct these sessions so we will this time we are having it as a form of a panel discussion so we can cover as much ground as possible and of course the chat box is open for anyone who would like to put in any questions they have we'll try to cover as many as long as they're not a repeat of what we're already discussing and uh, of course at the end you are free to even turn on your mic and ask questions once we're done with the discussion and at the end of the whole session there will be a feedback form link that is circulated please do make sure you fill so that it helps us plan more sessions we are looking because we are uh, yet planning this year's calendar so if you can actually help us with topics that would be relevant to you i think it would make the entire program's purpose more uh, likely for all of you so if we can begin with the experts uh, ritambara ma'am 
So uh, yes. whenever it comes to a theory exam, I think uh, usually students think because there's lots that we do day to day in practicals. But for theory, is there any particular, uh, you know, concepts or things that students should prioritize while they are preparing or must know things when it comes to a theory exam? Well, as an opening batsman, <laughs> let me congratulate you all to have uh, such a discussion here and for all the students. Like post-graduation is uh, different from uh, what you have done in uh, MBBS level, UG. So wherein you have uh, more of short textbooks and big textbooks, etc. But when you come to post-graduation, it, it's so vast. It's like an ocean. And uh, of course, uh, there are textbooks like Kaplan and Sadok and all that. But uh, short textbooks also are there, the concise uh, ones. But uh, when it comes to knowledge and information and knowledge, uh, it, it's very vast. And so uh, from this vast uh, knowledge, uh, what is going to be asked? The students will always have to struggle. But uh, as uh, uh, our NMC has made it even more clear. Of course, earlier days also university made it more clear that uh, four, four papers are there in theory usually and in each of the papers, what are the areas to be asked? Usually it is all fixed. Of course, the, uh, that may be discussed later on, but uh, from basic sciences to uh, specialities, major uh, generated areas to child and adolescent, geriatric, forensic, de addiction, uh, all these uh, specialities also, there is uh, one paper, uh, number two. And then uh, clinical and applied uh, sciences, wherein, you know, some case scenario based thing. So all the major disorders, I think uh, they, they all have to uh, be very, very thorough in their uh, theory, definitely. And the last one is the, again, uh, consultation as uh, uh, neurology, general medicine, other uh, inter, uh, 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 what should I say, uh, uh, interdisciplinary uh, kind of approaches and applications of knowledge also can be asked in theory. So I think uh, they have to be very, very thorough with uh, all the major disorders like schizophrenia, bipolar, anxiety, depressive disorder, all those, things. but specialities also. They should have, I think, uh, a good knowledge about uh, the applications applied also. And that's why the rotation programs are also there. So in theory also, all these things are asked very, very clearly. And uh, earlier days in my uh, uh, university, the last paper used to be on recent advances, etc. So, but nowadays, uh, I think uh, as NMC has made uh, it uh, like this, recent advances can be asked in any of these papers, all the four papers, depending on the, suppose, basic sciences, and then uh, they, uh, 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 the examiners might ask for uh, omics and uh, biological uh, uh, advancements, etc., in uh, etiological uh, advancements. Now that, of course, we are uh, seeing uh, more and more like uh, in applied uh, paper, you can be asked more of drugs and neuromodulation, etc. So all those new, uh, newer advances, uh, definitely they have to be very thorough with. And they should be actually, as I see it, that uh, for the theory paper, if you keep on reading the recent advances, journals, etc., the newer studies which are, uh, uh, you know, usually coming up, like if you, I mean, for example, CAT for antipsychotics and many for antidepressants and now the emergent and some newer uh, drugs are coming. So all the studies also, if you know a little bit, uh, that also actually helps. And usually culturally relevant uh, areas. Like suppose uh, I remember one uh, paper when COTPA as an act uh, came in. So, you know, many of the papers in theory, they started asking COTPA. So any newer, so uh, mental health uh, care act came. So people started. So any such newer uh, culturally relevant or country specific uh, things, if we are doing some programs, etc., all that also they have to be in touch with, and uh, they usually are asked nowadays. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Any of the other experts have anything to add? Oh. Uh, ma'am, I think I'll come. Ma'am, you're on mute. You're saying something. I said, I think as we go along, we can add. Otherwise, we would run short of time. <laughs> sure. So uh, the next question is actually to you. Uh, 
what is you know i think madam already has started on that that the typical format of uh, paper we talked about the four uh, papers that's paper 1 2 3 and 4 but when it comes to within the paper the typical format or the type of questions and uh, how to go about that so um nmc has very clearly stated now that the four papers that have to be conducted for the md exam the paper 1 should be basic sciences related to psychiatry. Paper two should be clinical psychiatry. Paper three is psychiatry theory and psychiatric specialities. And paper four is neurology and general medicine, which means liaison psychiatry. However, universities don't necessarily follow that order. They cover that, you know, the content is the same, but they may shuffle around the papers because we are still in a transition phase before we are standardized pan-India. Okay. So most of the time we have paper one, involving neurosciences and anything which is basic sciences applied to psychiatry. So earlier it used to be neurology psych and psychology with a lot of emphasis on psychology. Off late, that emphasis is changing to neurosciences and psychology. Paper one, right? Paper two is actually neurology and psychiatry. So the overlap between where there is, um, you know, where we need to understand neurology from a psychiatric perspective is usually what is followed in most universities. Paper three is hardcore clinical psychiatry and paper four is clinical psychiatry, including recent advances. This is the format which is by and large followed. As far as MUHS is concerned, Maharashtra University of Health Sciences, once upon a time, I'm talking about 25, 30 years ago, there used to be an essay question in paper four, which has been done away with because a hundred mark question when you already have a thesis was thought not to really assess the child in a um, child, adult in a more, um, you know, comprehensive manner. So DNB, if you see the national board has 10 questions in each paper. So it's 10 into 10, right? So what the most of the state universities have done is sort of amalgamated the old method and the new method. And now we have two questions of 25 marks each, or in some universities, it's 15 marks each. In some universities, it's 30 marks each. The first two questions, which are called essay questions typically now, right? And then you have the next lot. So depending on if you have 15 and 15, that leaves you with 70 marks. So you'll have seven short notes of 10 marks. If you have 25 and 25 like we have, then you have five short notes. If you have 20 and 20, you'll get six short notes. So that gives you sort of a wider coverage of the knowledge. And there's not so much emphasis on one particular topic, which is like a, sometimes a matka. If you don't know both the topics, what do you do? It does not mean that that individual has not really worked hard in their post-graduation, right? So we need to give them an array so that we can pick out what is the best. Please try and understand the students who are with us that it's tougher being a teacher. It's more difficult to fail. <laughs> honestly, mm -hmm. honestly, it's more difficult to fail, right? Because we have standard formats. So also when we are setting a paper, 50% of the questions have to be at a basic level, which means that these are questions that every student Anybody. should have or should have studied. 25 to 40% of the questions are questions which are of moderate difficulty and only 10 to 20 percent of the questions are difficult questions which will not impact your passing that particular paper so that's how we set a paper so similarly when we are correcting the paper we are also looking at the same thing so in your answer is have you covered the basic 50 percent if you've covered the basic 50 percent you've all already crossed over so if it's a 25 mark question you've crossed that 12 and a half marks if it's a 10 mark question, you've crossed that five marks. Then is it, have you add given value add to it, which is something which, yes, we would want to know. And then have you reached a level where you're giving something absolutely, um, you know, wonderful information or novel information. Maybe you had done a post OPD on it. Maybe it was your journal review. So you know that in depth and you have managed to hit a matka as they say, right? So you've hit the bow and arrow where it should. And you've got really good marks in that. So this is how we grade also as examiners. So most of your basic questions, like for example, if you're looking at neurology and psychology, the questions which are formulated, one of the two will always be 
something which everybody has done. The lobes, assessment of lobes. So this is something which you cannot get away from not doing in your psychiatry training. The psychology questions may be optional, but then something like if you are, even if you, we don't use it or rely on it much, but still say MCMI or Rorschach or Gestalt principle. So these are things which you are expected to have at least learned or at least know about, even if you don't imply too much of it. And we are not giving too much emphasis in terms of the marks. So similarly, when you go to neurology, they may give you a case or they may ask you, what are the psychiatric complications post-stroke, for example? Now you've seen that. You've seen that in years on. So even if theoretically you know X, Y, Z, you would understand that I have to apply this and I can write my answer on the basis of that. Clinical psychiatry now has a more of an emphasis on clinical scenarios. Sometimes there is one, sometimes there is two scenarios, but you can always discuss it out. So it might be alcohol withdrawal delirium, it might be suicide, it might be a treatment resistance schizophrenia, so on and so forth. And similarly, whatever questions you get in the short notes will never overlap. So remember that the questions don't usually overlap with the long note. If I've given you a long note on schizophrenia, my short notes are not going to cover that. Right? And then recent advances. Number one, most of your examiners are recent advances. They are not going back to their textbooks. So be aware of that. Number two, the papers are set well in advance, at least three to four months in advance. So if today a drug is launched, it's not going to come in your paper tomorrow, for sure. Right? Some very, very insightful tips. And I think now there's a lot of drive in general to make the paper more practically applicable rather than just going with by rote theories and things like that, which just are there for us to learn or maybe out of interest. So, Ashish, sir, writing, yeah. I think, I feel like, I mean, that's something that the teachers are also very, very concerned about because we have to actually read lengths and lengths of paper and make sense of it. So, I mean, as an expert or as a teacher, what writing style is expected in the paper? I mean, does it have to be concise? Should it be explanatory, point-wise, elaborate? I mean, if you could just give us some insight into that. Yeah, I think uh, one thing we should for, be very, very, very particular about writing it should be a very formal way of answering don't let's not be very casual or any way it may be this or it may be that that kind of uh, you know writing is not expected from a postgraduate at an mbbs level it was somewhere acceptable but as a postgraduate we need to be very specific and you know now there should be a we should strike a balance between your concise and explanatory writing styles like uh, you know what kind of questions are we expecting? Let's say if we have a, a kind of question where enumeration or listing is asked. So what is the question that is asked should be very, sometimes the question is enumerate this, list this, or discuss this, critically analyze this. So that is very important that we need to read and take catch of it. So when it is like an enumeration or listing question, we should make it point-wise. There is no doubt it has to be point-wise. And you should be very clear. We have pressure of writing exams, so we go in speed, but it point should be very, very clear. And each point, enumerate also just don't write list one, five points, and you think I have done enough. You need to at least put a line after that heading or point that you give. So elaborate in one or two lines. And when the question is like descriptive question, when you are asked like analyze this critically, answer this question there you have to make a structure so you can start with a heading a formal introduction then you can make subheadings and write a few lines in each of them and construct your paragraph but i think uh, most of the postgraduate level exams will use a combination of the two styles so we do not have a full question which says that list it or we start with define this list the causes and describe this so there are three portions of so you use a combination style. We start with like a brief interactive paragraph. Then in the main body of your answer, you construct into headings, subheadings, and list among them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a full, all the areas, all the points are covered. And it is, you know, you have to balance the brevity and depth. So you have mentioned everything point-wise and given a few explanation for it. Yes, a very detailed thing is required for complex issues like research-based, any question is asked. 
then you know you need to give opinions papers quotes there you probably need to have a little more descriptive in depth descriptions now you can avoid you know for you should be formal avoid any linguistic or la words that you know there are not common parlance so like psychopathology instead of some symptoms of illness so be very specific the more specific we are the better it means it appears that the answer presentation looks much better and you cover all the points i would say and i think uh, even the acronyms one needs to take care of people nowadays especially yes. with the messaging lingo assume that everybody knows what it is that they mean yeah but the social media is coming into our papers i suppose and one more point is handwriting we all must agree that as examiners we have limited time let's be very practical we have limited time and we have x number of sheets to answer and everything is repetitive like if mhs i think 50 20 60 people are answering in big universities in a limited period of time one day you have to check all those sheets so it's it appeals to reason logically that handwriting should be legible so what happens in a very you know unclear writing we miss many points ultimately you have to get marks for your points for the context that you have made so in a in a legible writing like few lines are missed the examiner also misses you have also you know made it very chaotic so that is very very important use bullets underline the points you know that is highlight things paragraphs this is very very important and wherever possible make tables i would suggest a small diagram or a table definitely takes to a different level exactly the examiner knows yes you know it so we don't hunt for certain things and you know you get one or two extra marks rather i would say from my experience so i think that should be take home from this Yeah, I think someone has asked, can we use flowcharts? I mean, I'm I definitely. Yeah, yeah, very definitely, that. especially in treatment, you know, protocols. You can use flowcharts very, very comfortably, and I think that's a better way of presenting. And don't assume that because the handwriting is bad, we'll just assume that you have written something. No, no, no. no. We hunt for <laughs> it. I'm just saying that it may be our overlooking that we may miss your points in that handwriting. So be specific. Make small lines. Leave spaces, leave good margins between each line. You can use a space line, no? So it appears very neat, and you love to. Who doesn't like to read a neat play? Okay, yeah. Make yeah, that first impression is the last impression, and then your handwriting. Though every examiner actually wants to give marks to the actual content, but then legibility is something which you know. Otherwise, examiner else sir say that we lose interest or. sometimes we can't decipher then it really works on the examiner's mind as such and as he said figures diagrams charts algorithms tables uh, comparative all that you know graphical presentations and to the point definitely will carry more weightage and marks and avoid sms go oh, please we have ha i've had papers where you write b for you Oh my God! Please, please, no, that is really a put off. I am not able to, uh, you know, sort of adapt myself to accept SMS lingo in a theory paper. No, it's very definitely, difficult. true, true. Definitely. And one more thing, you know, try to put in your theoretical. Many questions are theoretical. If you try to put in some context of clinical relevance, it definitely takes a edge off. So a point up there. it shows that you've actually understood what you've read and can apply it i think that's what matters yes, yes. that's what we want an md to do <laughs> very true pratamra ma'am so i mean we came to the different types of questions and how it should be written but then i think the biggest question on a student's mind always is oh this many questions this much matter and how do i cover it in the time that is given so how any tips on how they should allocate their time to the questions in the paper oh yes uh, that's a very important area to really practice on because time management see i mean just uh, example schizophrenia now you can write, uh, write books on it and you can write essays on it but you are actually asked a, a long question or maybe sometimes a small thing on the short question also so what is asked for and all that you have to cover in that period of time so whenever a question paper comes in the hands what we must do is actually from our school days we have been doing this that when the question paper comes in front of us what we have to do is read all the questions 
prioritize on your questions that what is best you know the best May, I, I mean it is also good to follow like you must not do in a question two there are four short notes and one short note you are writing here and the second one after the third question that also should not be done but you can actually attempt the easiest or what you know the best first right then strategically you have to divide time now you know five ten minutes you have to give initially to all this planning and organization that whatever questions there are there's a long question then the another has a two three short question uh, and then there are short notes etc so how much time to give roughly you must have the estimate etc and then only you start uh, writing as such you can of course uh, keep a, a balance between the volume uh, of uh, the uh, things you know and what exactly you want to put in. So depending on, as I said, the question hours and the weightage of, if the good examiner or the good paper setter is there, then probably in our university, we also do that. That suppose this is a long question, you also get that defined give clinical features, uh, management, these, that, whatever. And then you also have the marks accordingly, the two marks, three marks, four marks, and that's how it makes 30 marks. So you also actually have that kind of breakage many a times in the papers. And we are, as examiners, we must try to do that. So the students also know that how much to write in each section. Otherwise, what happens is clinical features, they have written long, 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 and then management, it's five months, but then they have written only two, three lines because time is not managed. So you have to understand all these papers, uh, how it is set and how much to write, etc. And uh, many a times, you know, uh, at the end of it, when uh, earlier days, uh, nowadays we don't go to, go to exam rooms and all that, you know, small things like supplementary, I want supplementary, I want to tie, all those also you have to keep in mind because you are stressed in the exam and all that. So keep uh, doing all that in between that I want one supplementary and I have to tie it up and do that, etc, etc. And at the end, you must keep some time for the review, revision and how much you have written and all that. So time management, you you can't have a mobile on you, but you can wear a watch or you have the uh, uh, clock on the uh, wall also, I think. So have some uh, uh, rough estimate of how much time you are taking as such. Right. So as far as time management is concerned, uh, uh, planning, organizing and ultimately practice. Maybe we'll talk about practice later in the preparations time. But if you have practiced it earlier, you know, so that helps like anything. Time management is all about uh, planning and then executing and ultimately practice. I think there's also a question that, you know, is it necessary that the questions should be attempted in the sequence or the order exactly, or is it okay if they go back and forth? Uh, see, question one, two, three, you can answer question one first. But then as I say that, suppose in question two or three, there are four, four short notes, then you can't do a question two, one short note here, and then question three, and then again question two. Never do that. So one question, fully attempt. Second question, three, four short notes, whatever fully attempt that way you can definitely i think it's very important that you make sure i mean they number the questions and the number subject. yes number sometimes though we have to find out that which question this uh, uh student is answering so always number at, at the end when you are reviewing so when you are going through it that uh, whether you finished or uh, five ten minutes you keep with yourself and then just check that all the numbers are there, underlines are there, headings, subheadings, you know, all that definitely reviewing will help. But time management, yes, you have to, you have to really, uh, you know, uh, uh, do it well. Otherwise, at the end, fag end, if you realize that I have not answered the whole question and I have only uh, 20 minutes left, then you will definitely get more anxious. So always uh, plan. Yeah. yeah. I'll come I'm over to you. Uh, we talked about the different types of questions, LAQs and SAQs. So, I mean, just we did talk about structuring the answer so that they make more sense, but maybe some more uh, tips on how you can approach. I think somebody has asked in the questions also, how many pages to write for 10 months? <laughs> how many pages for it? Uh, before I go into that, I'm going to extend what uh, Kamara ma'am had spoken. See, when you have a paper of 180 
minutes, that three hours for 100 marks, right? So that comes to approximately 18 minutes for 10 marks. That's what you have to keep in your mind. So 18 minutes is not exact 18 because you don't want to be touch and go. So about 15 to 16 minutes per 10 marks is what you should have in your mind. And when you're doing your preparation, your practice should be such that your clock is internal clock is set to 15 to 20, 15 minutes so that you know that I have done this and then I have to go to the next question. It's always a good idea to start with short notes first because you those are scoring. And then you can go on to your essays because in the essays, if you get lost and you start going on, then you rush through your short notes and then that's where the problem sort of occurs. So irrespective of how you shuffle the uh, the chronology, make sure your numbering is okay. See, we get papers where you have question three attempted first, which is the short note. Okay, and then you'll have one, two, three, four, five, which you have to attempt. Then you go to question one and question two, and then you've attempted question three, six in the end, and I have missed it as an examiner. Of course, in moderation with the university, they bring it back to my notice. But what you can do is in question three, then if you have attempted and there's no place where you have left it right over there, question three, number six attempted at end of paper. So at least the examiner knows that you have attempted that extra question and you will get the best of five. So that sequence, that clarity is very important in an exam so that you don't lose out on your marking scheme, right? Similarly, when we are writing short notes, you're not expected, it, the number of pages doesn't matter. We have had students who have written one page of a short note, which has more content than someone who's written five pages. Like Dr. Ashish said, we are looking for the keywords, we are seeing whether you have understood it. And if you give a clinical correlation to it, then we know that you've got it bang on. What is our aim? As examiners, the aim is to give an MD candidate to the community who's going to be responsible for treating patients with psychiatric illness. And if we get that through your theory as well as your practicals, you're there. So it's not, it, I'm repeatedly saying the same thing. It is very difficult to fail the exam with the structures that we have in place right now. So when you have your short notes, focus on exactly what is asked in the short notes. If you're asked side effects of SSRIs, please do not write classificatory system of antidepressants. What is the best choice? How do you choose the algorithm? And then effects and then side effects. Focus on side effects of SSRIs because you're wasting your own time by going into that. I'm not going to award you more marks for the knowledge you've displayed to me for a question which was not asked to you. You may know it very well, but you don't have to answer that. Correct? So short notes, just stick to and focus on the topic. The number of pages don't matter. As far as your essay questions are concerned. Now, if it's a theoretical topic, I think it's a good idea to write a small sort of index, maybe five points on what you're going to cover. Okay, so if they've asked you recent advances in schizophrenia, so you want to write genetics, you want to write neurobiology, you want to make a small index so that I know that what is coming in the next few pages. And if it is a clinical scenario, then points that you have considered or highlights of the case, highlights of the MSE if it's given, therefore, what is your differential diagnosis? What have you excluded? So we know that you have thought of these sort of things and thereby what is your management? What are you going to do? Or what are you going to watch for? Even if you cannot give a management flowchart algorithm or plan immediately, these are the things I will be thinking of and I'll be working towards it. And this is what you've done in the three years when you've been training. So this comes to you very easily and very naturally, right? including if there's a patient of alcohol withdrawal delirium, you give thymine, you give, please write all of that. We want to know that you know your basics. We do not want to reach PhD level at this point in time, right? But how you present yourself and how you bring to, the, to our knowledge that you know all this is also very important. So structure it accordingly. The minute you finish that 15 minutes at 10 marks, wherever you are, Go on to the next and you can come back if you save time because sometimes you will finish one question, uh, sorry, one 10 mark slot in seven minutes because you know it so well and it's shorter and you've just managed with an algorithm. 
also whenever we are asking you uh, management questions or when we are asking questions related to say newer drugs it's a very good idea to uh, quote if possible ips guidelines because these are made specifically so that we have a standardization our we usually refer to uh, the psychopharmacology guidelines across the world but IPS has specifically come out with these guidelines so that PGs can have a standardized format, teaching institutes can have a standardized format. So these are obviously not evidence-based in the, in the sense that we have not done RCTs for them, but still it is an expert consensus. So it's a good idea to read those while you're doing your preparation. And I think many of those guidelines are very wonderful flowcharts. So it becomes yeah. very easy to actually put it down on the paper and very fast to represent what comes. And I, someone has asked 30 marks, 25 marks, 20 marks, 15 marks, how much to write? There uh, is nothing like that. <laughs> there is nothing like that. You can write questions. You can write 25 marks for 25 pages and it could be full of, I'm sorry to say, but nothing which we can give. Marks too. At the same time, you have people in 25 marks who have attempted in two or three uh, pages, have written wonderful content and they have got really high marks so do not go as per number of pages this is a complete myth amongst all pgs focus on the content and focus on the content that you know it is okay not to know we are at an md level where it's sometimes not possible to have that degree of vast knowledge but whatever you know you have attended a lecture you've attended a webinar you've heard someone talking about something whatever you know please put that down if you do not know which receptor is a new molecule acts in, but you know the indications, write that down. It's perfectly fine. Like nowadays, the, the exams are also, actually examiners also need to change, like rather than just 25, as I said, there has to be some breakdown of marks, uh, you know, the, the, a full question of 30 marks. But if you read the question also, you will find something that they might have said that you write uh, the presentation, do the management if you have. And if the case scenario is given, there are specific questions at the end of it you are actually attempting to. And so your marks actually, if there is division given, you pay attention to that. If not also, as Madam said, that you structure and give these headings initially only that you are going to cover these, 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 these things. And once you actually plan and organize, you will know how much to write as such. That way it will flow, definitely. I think most, like everyone's been saying, most LAQs do have subdivisions in the questions and subdivisions in the marks. So if you actually pay attention to the question thread, rather than just jumping into that entire thing, it would help. If at all, the query may be in SAQs, but I think there, if you keep an eye on the time and look at what uh, you're looking when that nowadays are quite specific. So unless it's... DNB has structured it very well. Mm -hmm. In DNB, they actually give you in an LAQ also, how much, of course they have 10, 10 marks, but in that also, how much is the weightage of marks for each part of it mm -hmm. is very important. And even during the practical exam, when they have case scenarios, they'll divide it and give the examiner a key as to how you're supposed to mark, which is even better standardized, right? So similarly, over here, we also have something in our head, but please remember that first thing that your basics, the 50% is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And someone has asked that, should you attempt or leave a question? Well, ideally you should try and attempt every question, but supposing you don't know at all, then no choice yeah then don't don't uh, just try and give you know uh, all sorts of things which Some don't give me stories up. to make sense yeah. yeah so nowadays all all the teachers and examiners are actually taught how to make an exam paper and a blueprint of that and i think as teachers i think we i usually sometimes talk to my students that how the questions are framed and how the marks are uh, divided and how a blueprint is and how good a paper is when such uh, clarities are there on the examination paper also. So even the PGs also, if they're involved, sometimes UG papers, no, so you involve them, ki dekho kaise bante hai, question papers kind of. So they also will have some idea of it. It's not only the students who are uh, 
learning and writing the teachers are also going through a lot yes. Learning. Yeah, I think now what Dr. Damra said is very right. We make the papers, we need to give a key answer, key also to yeah. that. So expectations are predefined. With you reference. can't really, we don't have a choice. We don't uh, have a choice to think later, okay, this language. also could be added. We, we have to yeah. keep a key with references where you can find the answer. It cannot just be what yeah. I think it is. True, right? true. And someone has asked that, uh, do we, in management questions, should we quote all the guiding guidelines and all are more for th for practicals? You don't have to quote that. In theory, you write what you think is the management. I just said that if you can refer to IPS guidelines for writing it down, you don't really have to write a reference per se, right? And is it okay no, to use different colors? Different yeah, colors. Sorry. But some some universities have a clear rule that you can use only black and blue. Certain colors, I think, are meant for examiner corrections, like red and green. Yeah, right, yeah, green. Yeah. So, or we so now, I guess, for us, examiner correction has become totally digital. Hmm. So there is no, there is I no. Think that is best clarified with your uh, respective university guidelines, so that mm -hmm. you don't. Because if you use a wrong uh, color, sometimes that is taken as a malpractice as well. So you better be careful on those lines. And refer but to as, a, as a careful margin, don't use red and green. Yeah, because if they if it is to identify you as someone different, then it like Sri Lakshmi said, that will be considered as malpractice. So in at a PG level, usually we do not use you know colors. We don't have diagrams and things. We do have flow charts which you can use. And even your tables, diagrams will have to be in black and blue. And I think that question has already come that, you know, if you don't know anything, please don't write your own stories. Whatever relevant you think you may know, I think that you can put down. Uh, we'll move on to Dr. Ashish. Let me give you already an... on that theme about uh, common mistakes that students make. Anything else that you would like to... Typically. I think uh, most many points are covered, but I'll just mention them in the order. Like uh, misinterpreting a question is a common problem. You know, you should read, and there are many components. Like especially for a long note, define, list, etiology. Let's say define etiology, clinical features, and management. So there are four components to it. You need to answer all four components. So if we don't read or what has been asked we will miss one part of it and we may think that we have written the full, everything we knew about this topic and still miss one major part to so that part out of, let's say, management is three parts. If you have missed on it, three, zero on three, we can only mark you on seven. So that is very, very important. Read the questions, components and elaborate on each one. Nothing. Structure to answers. Sometimes we know a lot and we just write like an essay. But again, coming to the same thing, you need to structure it well in paragraphs. There should be an introductory paragraph then there should be headings subheadings and then write one or two lines in each subheading it will save your time it will save unnecessary details being included and very relevant points which are searching out very easily will come out so you get straight marks it's very very easy for us to mark also now sometimes giving how much of details so some avoid irrelevant details don't be very superficial so Ask what is asked, stick to the question that has been asked, not to the topic that it concerns. So like, it's not like write something like a newer treatments in bipolar disorder. You can't start writing everything on bipolar disorder. Right from definition till, then you come last to create, you know, recent advances. You will be only marked for that portion. The rest, all is gone unmarked. It has no value in the answer. So that very, very clearly, I said, uh, you have to blend theory with clinical relevance. So, you know, sometimes we write a lot of theory, depth questions, but we don't clinically relate it. So as Dr. Alka said, you should be aware of the current guidelines, some landmark studies, which is easily, you know, you can make it relevant, clinically relevant very easy. If you, you know, quote, as per this study, this is, one drug has been found to be better. You're giving it a relevant point. Time management, Dr. Raitamara has spoken about in detail. You need, and Dr. Alka also added, Roughly 1 to 1.5 minutes per mark, that should be your... Even if you don't finish the answer in 10, 12 minutes that is allotted to that question, please move on to next question. Don't keep writing one question and, you know, you will get maximum what you'll get. 80% of that question. And you will miss a short note, that is 10 marks. So at the end, you might lose more than you benefit by trying to complete one question. 
and last 10 minutes it's very very difficult but i by i experience we would say the last 10 minutes it should be revision it should be counting you have not missed one note you have not missed a part of the, you thought you will write half a page of that answer later on and you have not given it so please 10 minutes you should do it for that to sum it up and uh, you know legibility and presentation holds are important very important so please write neatly space it well all things said, floor arm, diagrams, whatever you want to put, it should be clean and legible. And that mistake you should not do that. I'll write lots, but I you know the examiner will fish it out and organize for myself. That is not going to happen. Okay. So don't do that. So plan before writing. Spend two, three minutes, read what question has been asked. What are you, as Dr. Alka said, what points you want to cover? Make a you know, pencil note somewhere. Four, five, six, seven, eight points I want to cover. Elaborate them nicely into headings, paragraphs, and conclude it well. So I think these are the common things that we, if we follow, no, most of it will get done well. Sometimes uh, when a question they don't know well, a common mistake what they do is they fill up pages by repetitions, you know, the sentence. So that examiner really gets, uh, you know, uh, this that the uh, student doesn't know it well. So never fill up the pages just like that. <laughs> I think it's for like what we tell our patients, no? When you read the question, don't react, respond. Take those few seconds, try to understand what's there in the thread, what is written there, and then start your answer rather than just seeing three words in the questions and then start writing. So that makes the uh, job easier for everyone. And I mean, to the person who's repeatedly asking about bouncer questions and you don't know what to write, I think our experts are telling you again and again that whatever relevant the question that is there, you can put down. If it's something that you genuinely don't know anything about, which is very likely to happen at a PG level exam, I think it's better not to frustrate everybody, including yourself, by trying to come up with some new script on paper rather than what's relevant. Uh, Ritam Ramam. So we have been covering points along these lines. Uh, we looked for, I mean, in terms of how to score in the exam. So any tips on, you know, uh, better scoring or, you know, how, how to write in the sense of a well scoring answer? Okay, I mean, a lot of things are covered. But to recapitulate, the, the, the three things are very important. The first and foremost comes is as as you understood the question, what is asked for and the exact content you are putting in. So content to the point, no repetitions, uh, not much of volume, but bullet points, etc. You're organized, structured, content is very important. Second thing is that you have really uh, uh, put it well organized with initially if it's a long question you have put uh, as uh, madam said alka said that you have objective that you will cover these these, these things at the uh, there is introduction so there is that kind of structure also that there is introduction then there are so many uh, headings and subheadings and points coming in at the end you have summarized and you have answered all the questions so that and appearance also all of uh, us have said that that if you have neatly put it, you organize it well, good legible handwriting, structure, clarity, organization, highlights or uh, underlines, headings, subheading, all that matters, right? So these appearance, content, and how you have structured and put it, that is very, very important, these three things. That will definitely score uh, uh, above, above all the others. So in the Bloom's taxonomy also, if you go through uh, the layers, so see, that is when content is asked for. So this is what I look for. That as uh, Sir said, uh, Ashish Sir said that uh, we have framed questions like that, that critically appraise, correlate, uh, whatever. So, so these kind of verbs and uh, verbs are used. So pay attention to these verbs. They are not in the lower rung. See, the lower rung of Bloom's taxonomy says that remember. So definitions, uh, giving descriptions, uh, clinical features, identifications, enumerations, illustrations. These are all at a very lower rung. So now the examiners actually, as we give them case scenarios and some 
these kind of other uh, verbs, so they have to go higher up in the Bloom's taxonomy. They, they, they have understood the concept well, not just they have understood, summarized or classified or compared or interpreted, they will go on to apply. Now, a case scenario is there, they have to read and they have to understand, come to a differential diagnosis, ultimate, most probable diagnosis, etc., etc. They have to apply their knowledge. So that is higher up. So and ultimately evaluating uh, uh, if uh, the students has done or not. So have they really critically appraised uh, whatever is asked for? They have op opined or not? And ultimately the end stage, if you remember Bloom's taxonomy is creative <laughs> creativity. So overall organization and the way they have structured and put the information with their own perspective, that is the ultimate, right? So whatever is written in textbook, you just say that that comes only at a lower rung. Just you have remembered it and you have put it. So go higher, have your own uh, appli uh, uh, applied uh, 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 knowledge and create your own perspectives and that definitely carries more marks. Uh, I'll come, ma'am. I think this is also something that we have uh, spoken about, but uh, just as a reiteration, the last few minutes or last time in the paper that we're talking about reviewing, rechecking, some things that they must do in that time period. See, uh, sometimes it happens that when we are in the flow and we are uh, writing really fast, you might forget one or two very important points which you otherwise know. It's there in your head, but it just hasn't come forward when you're writing that theory paper. So that reviewing of, uh, I would say even more than 10 minutes, maybe sometimes 15 or 20 minutes is very, very important, which is why if we go backwards from, um, you know, a hundred mark paper to 180 minutes and you cut off that 15 to 20 minutes, you have about 16 minutes per 10 marks. So you average is 15 in your head. So once you review the paper and you realize, oh, this point I've not I've not really mentioned and it's really important how did I forget it how could I forget it you know for example if we are talking about protracted delirium in alcohol and you've forgotten to talk about assessing magnesium which we know you know but you have not written it down let's say so you go back and you kind of put that down in your notes so that reviewing is very important number two it is also very important for you to understand where you have written the gibberish just to cover the pages. So in undergraduation, usually we will find whatever may be the question, the answer is very simple. They will write X, Y, Z, whatever they know. Then they'll write psychopharmacology, cognitive behavior therapy, interpersonal therapy, everything, everything, family therapy, and one big bucket out here. Very often, even at postgraduate level, when we do not know the specifics of theory, we will write therapies, we will write cognitive therapy, we will write behavior therapy. So we just want to cover the pages. Please don't do that. It's better to convert it into acute and long-term care and put down whatever you know. Even if it's supportive therapy, it's fine. That's what we are doing. We do not have case managers. We do not have fantastic things which are written in the Western textbook because we have such a huge population. Right? So we do psychoeducation, put down psychoeducation. So whatever you feel that you have put too theoretical, which is not really something that you know of, you can always strike that off also. So adding things which you've missed out and striking off things which you yourself think is, you know, just to fill papers is something which your review helps in. And also, supposing you're doing a drug, okay, sometimes I have forgotten a simple thing like dosing. So I will add that thing to it. So these are aspects to think about when you're reviewing. I also want to address that question because I, I realized that the person who was talking about the bouncer question was very distressed about it. You see, you have six options. Out of six, you have to answer five. Or out of eight, you have to answer seven. So you are given that leeway of not knowing one completely. It's perfectly fine. Don't answer it. Mm. Why do you have to stick? to the fact that I need to answer everything. Don't answer that question. It's perfectly okay. But don't answer in such a way that it's going to be difficult for you as well as for the opposite person 
that means your examiner and then that kind of ticks off a uh, you know a uh, reaction which is like uh, this person is just trying to uh, faff which we don't want we don't want that as an impression that's very very important you ma'am i can see bhavish sir here if sir you don't mind we're almost at the last question we'll finish that and then i can see you put up your hand so then maybe we can just take what you have to say uh, ashish sir we talked about yeah. this so i think for most uh, residents it is kind of like you give your they are practicing they work on the mcqs and then they come into residency and then uh, you know you have to write this long theory paper again so how important is practice and you know like timed sessions or what really do you have to say with regard to practice sessions and preparation i think uh, shilakshi it's been very very important that we have to have some practice about various aspects of answering it's been always told to us but uh, it's becoming more and more pertinent now because now digitally the material is available the resources are available very easily i think the pgs are at the, this point of time at advantage that probably we didn't have at our time but it's always been very important so certain things like uh, what why do we need a practice session so we understand what kind of questions or what are exam patterns don't go directly as somebody in the chat box asking which paper is which paper. when neurology comes in which paper or recent yeah. advances That's come in which paper by practice by practice sorry some interruption so by practice we will be not unclear about this at all we know which paper is what and what kind of you know patterns are going to be followed by each university it may vary from university to university so wherever you are placed for 3 years you can very well get accustomed to that second thing you by going through exam papers like past exam papers or mock papers you have a fair idea what topics are getting repeated core themes that are getting repeated it's it's very very it's in impossible that repetition don't happen so it will happen in key areas of repetition will happen except in recent advances where you will have new new relatively newer questions that coming up and you also get the preferred style of questioning that in this university most of the papers are trimmed to etiology clinical features management etiology clinical features. so you have a very fair idea how it is coming up now so you get patterns and recurring themes that happen if you you know it also simulates your exam conditions no? that 3 hours this many notes and this is so it's very important that mock papers are taken with the simulatory a simulation like a exam so you write a paper in 3 hours so you know your your writing speed will come out your presentation style will come out your key areas are covered and you know which are your not key areas so or areas that are weak that you can work on so you revisit reassess you can get it assessed by any of your faculty any of your seniors it will give and a constructive feedback you can receive very well on the questions that are available or some questions we didn't understand even how to approach that question like we used to get a, i remember myself writing a long note third fourth paper was 100 marks one paper eating disorders now eating disorder can be approached in many ways age wise disorder wise and so on and on so if such a even in short notes you can get some confusions like this how to approach the answer so then you have a guidance pre available before your exam third thing pressures will come down you know you have to finish in 3 hours you are used to writing in 3 hours so examination pressure which last day directly one day match it will become a practice session so you will not play that under that much of pressure and you can perform better your stigma is better uh, you sorry stamina is better and uh, you are more legible you know how to improvise you have written such a kind of answer in more or less format you know how to organize it better you can introduce a table here you could have done this there there in that 18 minutes 20 minutes or 15 minute 15 minutes rather it's very difficult you can get points but how to organize those points in the best possible way you can do it by practice sessions and i said your mentors obviously can give you very very good feedback or even peers can give you a lot of constructive feedbacks if you do it practicing well before exams and obviously don't take it just before exam it should be a practice probably is the start it should be all year but at least at the start of your third year where you have good enough time what you don't know to cover up rather knowing you know some people realize at the end i don't know this also that condition should not come and more pressures build up 
so try to do it in time you have various scopes of improvising what you know feeling confident of what you know and improvising what you don't know so that would have no an incremental improvements can be done in this way i think that would be very very helpful i think nowadays where everything is uh, even case histories i think we are all used to typing so to get the practice of writing also becomes yeah three hours writing is not easy it gets exhausting after a point uh, i can see some uh, somebody is asking about revision on the last day and uh, what sources would you suggest for theory paper revision somebody saying see. i think uh, revision on the last day in a post graduate exam is next to impossible unless you have made key points you have to prepare even your long note should have 10 key points okay so you have management you will write like management of many i usually have mood stabilizers other drugs you know other, other modalities of treatment so you have those headings i think you can recognize those headings the rest will come out itself what you've done in 3 years it automatically comes down whatever you read last moment no it uh, it surely doesn't boil down to the same thing it's your learning over the 3 years that comes down in the paper automatically even in practical exams the same thing happens you know what you give what you been routinely using for patients it comes out you may read guidelines and the best combinations about what comes out when a question is asked is hello prada promit is and it sometimes comes down i tell all my students comes down says 10 50 that's the answer we sometimes it prompts out so what you have been practicing over the years is what is important organize that well i think you will write the best answer that way rather than cramming in the last moment and trying to get best guideline you know when you will read the best books best guideline but coming out will be difficult with that so make points make short points revise those on the last few days and come out with the best answers i think that beautifully comes up to a last question which i think is open to all in the house about handling the stress of exam i can see some of the students the way they are putting the questions on the chat they already seem to be quite stressed out which is quite understandable i mean it's the post graduate level theory exam but uh, ritam bra ma'am any tips on how they can deal with the stress and like <laughs> using their oh uh, yes i mean all the whole discussion of one hour if you listen to you and if you really do well your uh, uh, preparations and practice and all that uh, and planning all that will reduce your stress but uh, let me tell you that in undergraduate days what happens is you know that in anatomy onwards like or uh, clinical setting onwards you have vivas and you have internal exams and then you have summative exam etc in post graduate days i think many times the students take it very lightly so if you are taking it lightly you know there is so much time at the end of 3 years only uh, our internal assessments may be there but they are not given weightage kind of you know so that way also it affects uh, the students a uh, lot so if you are only aiming at the at the end uh, i'll cover up this is also the time where you actually really get distracted not just with your clinical if you are in clinical uh, field of course psychiatry the clinical field so if you are distracted there and you are not paying attention to your readings etc and uh, uh, what happens is this is also the time of your uh, you know many times the post graduates of course uh, they have all the right they uh, get into marriage or other relationships and these are, so these distractors are always going to be there so how much you are actually uh, putting your emphasis on the post graduate studies you know that makes a big difference and uh, i personally in my department what we do is every 6 months we conduct an internal exam theory also and the uh, practicals also oski and other things so they get into this practice and as a sir said ashish you as a said that constructive feedback is very very important that you as a student not just write papers but you ask ask for the feedback also of course the marks is itself is a feedback but other than that also they can always approach the teachers and if you actually have worked well all the three years and you have prepared well you have planned well and you have practiced well i hope that there will not be any more uh, stress and anxiety and being a psychiatrist you have already been working on these areas you have been 
actually uh, teaching uh, uh, your uh, uh, other uh, uh, colleagues or students who have approach or patients is stress management and relaxation and deep breathing and all that i hope you can apply all that to keep your stress levels uh, down but you know your uh, self better get yourself analyze do i get worked up do i really so and address that beforehand before the exams approach yeah i think expecting oh. to be able to complete portions in pg is something that people keep getting worried oh there's so much left and there's somebody asked about revising one day before the exam i think by this level why one needs to put that thought to rest i i, I never think you're completing portions it's like an ocean so you will never complete no after 30 years also we are reading <laughs> we keep on you know so you will never complete that's very relevant as quick yeah. points lakshmi lakshmi i think some stress is very good all students should understand some stress makes us work better so yeah. unless is a distress don't worry about it it will take you through second thing we can't cover everything simulations will help you to yes. you know get through that pressures pre exam experience it and you will be able to better handle it and last thing which helps you out is every examiner is most at least in majority examiner comes to pass you <laughs> yes. it was the organized way that we have been speaking out if you put it in that format i don't think you would not do it we are not talking about excelling but we will definitely come crossing that boundary i think most of the pgs can cross with whatever i think what dr ridhamra pralka and a few points from my side if you add and obviously your teachers have been telling all through practice it practice it read it and organize it that way and i think most of the examiner come to clear you through so um shri lakshmi just to add my two bits to this i think the learning starts as soon as you enter and adult learning is very different we can't you know forget that so every time you have a case which is interesting go back and read whatever is relevant to that case and you keep add on so it's not like i've seen depression i've read it and i'm not going to read about it again because every time i add a layer to my learning like rutamara ma'am said we are also still learning actually because by virtue of being in teaching institutes and pr make presentations wherever possible if you have your local state meetings have case presentations nowadays you have posters for pgs and almost all conferences you have free papers make sure that you are articulate with talking about psychiatry because that helps teach ugs like again ma'am said so it just helps you get your concepts clear teach your juniors so registrar should teach the housemen so that that the the whole you know uh, the okay, flow of about psychiatry helps for both practical and theory once you get your time off your examination leave i think consistency is the key being disciplined about doing don't let the portion drive you crazy i have to do so much in a day but be consistent that i will try and cover this if i cover this it's a bonus treat yourself that okay so give yourself self motivation and incentives to do better so you will get maybe an hour off if you cover more than what you had and that gives it's a good way to work and also very importantly which we tell all of our students is if you can study in a group nothing like it because if one topic is going to take an individual 10 hours and if 10 people divide it that's one hour each that's 10 man hours covered so working in a group and studying in a group finding of course like minded people all cannot gel but you need to have people of your mindset and your pace so don't go with someone who's going to stress you out further oh my god he is able to finish so much he is able to... i have my doubts that people can finish those huge portions i always had my doubts but this is what we always tell them and again consistency is the key right from the beginning so even our housemen our regist new registrars we tell all of them please write your summary write your differential diagnosis right from day one so it becomes a habit it is not something new because the exam is one part of life your real exam is the outside world people are going to determine whether you are a good psychiatrist or not not the three of us sitting here not the four of your examiners if you are good your patients will tell other patients to come to you so please remember that if you start right in the beginning and you maintain that discipline and consistency everything will be very smooth during the exam including neurology and neurological examination 
because then you fumble over there because you're trying to cram it up at the last minute. Do it for every patient. What difference does it make to you? It's practice. I think Dr. Bhavish has had his hand up for a while, sir, if you have something. Uh, please unmute yourself, sir. Thanks for the opportunity to ask a question. Uh, in our Gujarat University, I am seeing that in last three to four years, uh, there is one paper of psychology and sociology. But there is no question asked about psychology or sociology. Even though separate uh, paper number two is there for psychology and sociology. So uh, students read, read it for three years, but they do not uh, get any questions to write on that. So it is very difficult sometimes that uh, students get confused whether uh, they have to study the psychology, they have to study the uh, Jung or Freud or something. So that is why the, you have al already mentioned that it is universe, uni university based what universities uh, different for the different universities. But he, he, even in the same university, such things happen. Which is but why... uh, Bhavish, why therein you have to work with the board of studies of the university, whoever is representing your colleges, just check who are the professors who are representing there. And nowadays, NMC guideline is there. That these are the four definite... Uh, areas which uh, uh, papers uh, will ask uh, from and psychology sociology may get covered in basic sciences not fully as earlier days earlier days uh, there was hardly any other uh, kind of things no nowadays we have a lot of recent advances but your board of studies and professors have to work and change that title and now NMCSA, so university has to do only this that now we follow NMC guidelines and that covers everything Thank you, but, Madam. I don't don't know whether uh, ask, this will help. Ask or... others. Ask others. BJ Medical College, I Meenakshi. When you ask them, they'll know Nilima. When she'll know. So you ask who are in the board of studies, and uh, they'll take uh, care I of. I think I yeah. think they're conveners. Conveners. Conveners are usually an internal examiner. So our own internal examiner should moderate it also well to cover on the topics. No, Mavish. Hmm. Probably something we can take up further in a discussion where it's more of teachers. I think today's session is more on how to yeah. help do absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, any final so, words of advice from all our experts, if we can just take a quick round, Ritambra, ma'am. Uh, I would say just uh, as the uh, sir said, uh, you know, if you love your subject, if you're passionate about your subject. And every patient is a teacher. Every interaction is a teacher. And uh, just have this uh, attitude of learning, imbibing the knowledge. And uh, I would say that if you have not read each line of the textbook also, if you have really done well, if you have paid attention to your clinical tasks also, theory you can always crack very easily. Because as I said, that nowadays more and more uh, uh, emphasis is on the higher up, the applied knowledge rather than the pure knowledge, right? And the recent advances, of course, you if you have attended, as Madam said, sir said, you have attended some conferences, etc. You have learned and listened to uh, the uh, discourses, such I mean, webinars on those some some topics and all. All that will also add to the knowledge, and easily you will be able to. Like I have hardly seen anybody failing in theory exams. Anybody? Alkama. Um, I think that uh, this is a phase of life where your lifestyle <clears throat> is equally important. So someone, Romesh, kept asking that how of how much should you sleep, and I would say that six to seven hours of sleep 
throughout is very, very important. Don't compromise on that. We have had students who were watching the World Cup during the exam and did not turn up the next day. And uh -huh. the way that we could contact them. So we have to go and break open the door and please don't get into all of that. <laughs> you curriculum, make sure that you time yourself well, as was discussed in the time management. So sleep well, eat well, do some bit of socialization, not not online, real physical meeting, have some exercise and you may not have to, you know, pump iron or do whatever, but you can take a walk, you can do so many other things. We have had some of our students in the three months who really actually toned up and became very um, fit because they were timing themselves so well. So it is important that you you break your curricular studies with all these things and stay healthy both in the brain as well as the body if we want to crack it because it is not only about aptitude but it's about attitude if you're cool you're calm you're collected you know that you know your examiner is clearly going to know that you know something to live well, by mindful breaks will definitely help you. ashi sir your final tip i'm in no. I, I say mindfulness is very important. We can't, we try, no, we try to cram a lot of hours to cover up that portion. But I doubt any human can sustain for more than 50 to 60 minutes at one point of time. But what happens to us if we start taking that concept very seriously, people take breaks and then breaks don't end. And then they feel guilty yeah. and they do overdo. It's like the cycle. So you need to have a one hour and then time break very mindful of five to 10 minutes is more than enough. Where you can meet, you know, if you're living in a family, you can meet your family member, you want to make a call, you can do that. You can do some kind of bit socialization, not like uh, going out, but very small time breaks and powered, focused reading of one hour, 50 minutes to one hour is, I think that takes you through in the last few days. It's very, very important. Sitting throughout, you only going to get more stressed because memory, what all will complain of, my memory is failing me. That's a common common complaint. All students, they come to us even, sir, sir, you don't remember. You don't remember at least, you don't remember at least in these days. So um, actually what they are trying to do is read read and over-read without means assimilating it with time. Long-term memory is not working out. They're not making points or something and they want to remember each and every point in that order. So, you know, don't punish yourself. Be very, very helpful to yourself. Don't be very critical. Read, give breaks, revise, organize. I think that will help you lots to good. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think what we've got today to all those who are not giving their exams in the next one or two months, I think mm -hmm. everything starts from the beginning. So if you're consistent, you're reading throughout, I think this last period will not be so stressful. And if anyone is genuinely going through issues, having anxiety, I mean, as... Uh, but going to become psychiatrist, I don't think we need to tell you. Please seek help at the earliest with whoever is available. Because yes, I mean, exam is something which is stressful. And if there is something pathological, I think it needs to be dealt with before it's too late. So thank you so much to all our experts. I mean, I think the number of participants was a show to us about how important PGs feel this topic is. So I'm glad that we were able to get you all on board. Dawande, sir, any thoughts, anything that you would like to... I would uh, say one line, Sushil, before you say, I, I should thank Sri Lakshmi. She organized it very well. It was very well organized question. So I think best could come out, I suppose. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sri Lakshmi. Wonderful. Yes, I have similar, similar regards for Sri Lakshmi. She's an asset for our committee. And as I told you, uh, Sri Lakshmi before, uh, it's, it's the skill of chairman to select right person in the right committee. <laughs> so, uh, last remark. Thank you all panelists for sparing your time, and I'm telling, uh, I'm very, very sure this will be useful for our students. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. All thank you. the students are still here. Please fill the all feedback the form. It will help us uh, organize more sessions all. that are for your needs. So, thank you. It will be coming up on the WhatsApp group as well. Stay tuned on the WhatsApp group. There will be regular updates as to upcoming sessions. 
thank you so much everyone for sparing your sunday morning here with all of us and uh, i hope that we have been able to help the students with their needs i can see bhave sir uh, here sir would you like to give any concluding remarks i just have one remark it's also the skill of the zonal president to choose the right chairman for the committee <laughs> true sir true true very true sir. <laughs> i think thank you sir right. I think, right. I think much to say i think it was wonderful i think as a board